What is up YouTube? Welcome to my channel. I'm not going to bore you with like an extensive overview of what to expect. We're just going to jump in on a build and go from there. What build is that going to be? I don't know. Let's go look around and see what I got. How about a LT1000? Craftsman! Mud mower! Alright guys, here she is. This is going to be build number one. And it's going to be the Craftsman LT1000. She is an 06. I really dislike this body style. I don't care for this mower, but it's what I had laying around, so I wanted to build something. Here she is. One nice thing about disliking it, I don't care about it. I am willing to beat it up, willing to trash it, willing to do whatever. Um, right now, as you can see, her rear end is missing. Her booty. It is gone. I have it sitting over on the workbench. I had to modify it. I tore up the uh, input gears on it. So, like I said, it's nothing special. Nothing special at all. Um, I'll do more in-depth overview later, probably once it's up and running. But yeah, that's what we'll be working on. Let's go find a transaxle. Hey, there's the transaxle. I found it. Um, yeah, don't mind this garbage right here. Don't look at it right now. But it's your standard Spicer transaxle. It's six speed. I had to tear it apart, put all new grease in it, uh, put all new bronze bushings on all the shafts in there, and installed new uh, needle bearings here. Then I bought a foot style transaxle, same thing, and put a new input shaft, or put that input shaft in here with the pinion and the bevel gear, because that was an issue. These bearings wore out, which made the uh, two gears kind of like unmesh, and it just tore the teeth right off the bevel gear. And some of those uh, bushings inside were shot, which didn't help the situation. So I went through, rebuilt the entire thing. Now she's tight. There's like no slop. I reshimmed everything, and I basically overhauled everything. Then I built this eighth-inch thick steel like backbones, what I call it, case saver backbone, whatever. But roughly bent, I think five pieces total. Took one, two, and three, welded them together as a section left this gap here so I could unbolt the top section from the bottom section then I welded the two on the bottom together and that salt serves two purposes first purpose strengthen this case these case are cast aluminum they're super thin they're weak they're not worth their weight in scrap then the second purpose is to put this field goal looking thing on here this is to support this input shaft um, because I run a really tough clutch spring it puts a lot of pressure on these bearings what I want to do is extend the shaft up a little bit and basically support it against here so when you engage the clutch it's got to pull on all this not just put pressure on these needle bearings I don't plan on running this transaxle forever I just wanna make it last for the time I gotta use it so that's what all this mess is for all right, here's how I used to run this transaxle. I had a three and a half inch rear pulley and a wire style belt keeper. I can't stand these, so I wanna get rid of this. This stuff's garbage. Um, second thing, pulley. I have that black pulley back here. That's gonna be my new engine pulley, but I wanna run a complete different design on the engine pulley. I wanna be able to bolt pulleys to the hub. So at any time I can unbolt a pulley, leave the hub on the motor, bolt a new pulley to the hub, and have a different gearing then. So to do that, I want to do the prototyping on the rear pulley first. Um, one important thing I always found out was the first one that you build is always a prototype. So I'd rather build it back here because I don't ever change on or plan on changing this rear pulley out once it's on there. But I just want to see what it's going to take to do that setup and see if I have any issues doing it back here. So, with that being said, I don't need this one no more. This is old. Alright, another thing. This is going to be the style of pulley I want to run. It's identical to this black one, it's just a 4 inch. And I picked the 4 inch because I needed a like half inch lip here to be able to bolt the pulleys to a hub. And if I bought this style of pulley, but at this size, three and a half, it only gave me like an eighth inch space, and that wasn't enough space. So I had to up it to a four to gain this lip here. 
Um, this lip is crucial for building a coupler or a hub or whatever. Basically like one of these. I want to sit on here the right size for the shaft with the big washer welded to it where this pulley will sit on there and then you bolt it through the washer if you get what I'm saying. So, I bought where is it at? I don't, there it is. I bought one of these. Well, I bought, I bought two of them, I think. 5 eighths, 3 sixteenths keyway, slides over, and I have a lot of extended height to work with. That way I can, like, lock a bearing onto here and tie it back to here to support that shaft. But, this, and this don't fit. Which is fine with me. Like I said, I gotta put a washer on here, weld it, and then do bolt patterns. So I take whole saw center slugs, and that's what I was gonna use for a washer. You know, bore this out to here, slide it over, weld it. Then I started looking, there's a lot of excess material in here. I have a lathe, so I might as well turn this down some. And then I can drill a smaller hole in here, put it over, weld it on, and do what I need to do. So I had to put the original pulley back on, get the measurements off the case to the center here, and off this case saver to the center there. I wrote everything down, as you can kind of see. So I know where to do my machining for this pulley to fit on this washer on this um, coupler. And after all that was said and done, a lot of messing around. I made this right here. And what I did was I kind of just copied the original pulley. It had like an inch and a quarter hub thickness there and an inch up there. So I took this, machined it down an inch so far, then turned an inch and three eighths the rest of it, and that's where this kind of turned out. Then I took one of these hole saw centers, drilled out an inch, put it over, welded it in place. And I just put some big glob welds just in case I have to grind it off, I can, but that's going to be more than enough weld to hold it in place. Then I put a step, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I put a step and this overall diameter is the same as the inner diameter here. So. The step kind of gives it a place for the pulley to sit on, so it kind of holds it center. Then I put that six bolt pattern in there to hold the pulley. Chair is the pulley I'm actually going to use. Sits over, it's got the holes already in there, bam, done. But it's not done. A, I need to do a mount up here still. To back here to support this input shaft and B I need to figure out belt keepers now if anybody knows anything about like racing ATVs and go-karts you know where they have the sprocket with the sprocket sits like this usually with a disc on this side and a disc on the other side and it's a, like a chain keeper gonna do the same principle but with a V pulley so I made these. Bam, just like that. So now my pulley is sandwiched between two flat pieces of metal. And that's going to be my new belt keeper. That's what I want to do to my engine. Now, one of the only issues I'm running into is there's an open space between the back side of this belt keeper and this top side of this flat flange. So I need to make spacers to fit in here. So when I tighten the bolts between here to here, it's not compressing this in. And I want something so when this is tight, it's putting pressure on the pulley, which is sitting on that first flange on this uh, coupler system. So to do that, I bought some quarter inch thick uh, loom loom, three inches wide. I got to take a hole saw and cut some circles out clean them up, put this bolt pattern in there, and then space them up till they come just proud of this edge. 
and if it doesn't come proud of this edge, I can take this, chuck it in the lay, turn this down a smidge, or just take a sander, sand it down, just so that when those are stacked up on here and I'm tightening stuff down, it's not putting pressure here, it's putting pressure on here to lock everything together. All right, three inch hole saw, mounted in a drill press. Got a piece of sacrificial wood underneath the piece of aluminum, so when the hole saw comes through, it hits here, not the table. Uh, I got a bolt sticking up, so I have something to rest the piece of metal against while I'm hole sawing, because these hole saws love to grab. Uh, drill press, I can't slow it down enough for it, so I've got it on the lowest setting. And I got an eighth inch hole already drilled in this piece of aluminum. All I have to do is line that up with the quarter inch bit sticking out of the base of the hole saw or center of it and we'll go to town. And like I said, I'm worried about the inside diameter of this hole saw, not the outside. Here's the first ring. You can tell there's a burr. It all needs ground off, but it don't fit inside this pulley like it should. It's ever so close. So basically I need to grind or turn, I guess turn because I'm going to use a lathe. I need to turn a little bit of the circumference down. Uh, roughly a 30 second maybe overall. All right, I got all three on that bolt that I cut the head off. Spacer nut, then the regular nut, and the jam nut. So that's kind of how I do it. Now I can turn them all to one size. Now it's time to get this bolt pattern onto these aluminum discs that I just machined. What I'm going to do is just lay this over top. I'm going to hold it up from underneath. It's a real tight fit inside this lip here. Now I'm going to take a transfer punch, which is just a center punch that's the exact size of the hole. Go down through the hole and punch. And it's going to put a little center dot on it. Then I'm going to go to the drill press, drill it out to a quarter inch. I got to do one hole on this disc, then same thing with these two discs over here. Then after that, I'll bring it back over, shove a bolt through, in that first hole, center up the second hole across, center punch all three of them. Go drill those. After the second hole is drilled in all three, I'll go back through and bolt the disc in and then center punch the other four holes. And then go through, drill them all out. These actually fit so tight, at least the two that I didn't round over, I'm going to go ahead and just center punch the rest of the five holes. You got all three discs, all the holes are drilled to a quarter inch. Now what I got to do is get the centers drilled out. Two of these need this diameter, it's an inch, basically hole sawed out. And the first one I know is the one that I rounded the edge over on the lay. So that's going to go down, and then I'll have one sit on top. So these two need an inch hole. The third one is going to sit on the back side of this. I'll have to grind around it for the welds, but this diameter is one and a quarter, I think. One and three eighths. So I'll grab a hole saw close to that and slug it out of the back side of this one. And like I said, I'll just die grind where the weld is until it sits flush on that plate. I'm gonna go ahead and cheat. I'm gonna go an inch and a half and just drill them all at an inch and a half just to make it simpler. And here's what I do. I use that sacrificial piece of wood again and then I drill two quarter inch holes to hold bolts down in there. If you have to you can drill bigger on the back side throw nuts up in there hold everything tight but I haven't had bad luck especially with the loom loom that if you just sink two in there long enough, they stay in place. And then you go ahead, you just hole saw that middle out. It's going to move some. Uh, I'm going to clean them up in the lathe.
here you can kind of see the bottom setup. You got the bottom belt keeper, the spacer, and then the flange that the pulley sits on. And right now I have like four or five bolts sticking up through here. So what you do is you take the pulley and you put it over these bolts like so. It sits on that flange and it has that little step. Then you take two other washers or spacers or whatever you want to call them. They sit on there like so. And then that makes the top of this flush with this. So when this top belt disc sits on top and gets bolted down, this is basically solid between the disc here, the pulley, flange, the other washer, and the other disc. There's no slop, no air in there, so when you tighten it down, nothing can give. It's, it's one solid, like, chunk. But yeah, this basically sits... something like that and then all the bolts will come up through like kind of like that and then they'll all get you know some nuts on them what I'll probably end up doing because there is a lot of pieces inside of this um, belt keeper or pulley setup whatever you want to call it I might just go ahead, I gotta get the right length bolts and they're gonna be a little long, I'll have to trim them down, but I'm probably gonna go ahead and weld them to this bottom belt keeper. That way I don't have to deal with the bolts, I can just assemble it like this, screw some nylon lock nuts on, and then throw it onto the transaxle. So it's like that. So, now you can kind of see how it's going to function. Kind of reminds me of a hamburger. We'll wrap this video up here and we'll worry about uh, bracing that input shaft in the next video. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching this first video. Hopefully the second one we can get that transaxle buttoned up and put underneath that mower over there. Uh, please leave a comment, I'll read it. Try to right back to you or whatever and basically have a good day enjoy and let's see you on the next video thanks again have a good one bye